My name is Cindy Lee. I'm an instructor of this course, Intercultural Business Communication. Welcome you to join us. Today we are going to look at the first lesson, Introduction to Intercultural Communication Competence and Cultural Intelligence. Now, first of all, let's look at the content page, and this page will tell us what we are going to cover in today's lesson. The first session, we are going to look at what ability does an ever-changing business model need. And then we will look at the definition of intercultural communication competence. This session is an answer to the first question. And then we will look at and study the components of intercultural communication competence. And then finally, we will look at the definition of cultural intelligence briefly. Then finally, will be the conclusion. So, first of all, let us think about it. Everybody takes this course and you're studying intercultural business communication or intercultural competence for a business. Well, first, we need to think about what kind of ability is uh, necessary for surviving in the future business world. Now, that's a look at. Now, first of all, this is a very important concept. The world is flat. So this is actually a book title, and I will recommend you to study, to read the book, The World is Flat. Nowadays, organizations increasingly look toward international labor markets for skills and educated labor to maintain high productivity and innovation levels. So what does it mean? It means that in the future, when you work in a company, when you enter the workplace, you look at your colleagues, and your supervisors, your managers, they may come from different parts of the world. Why? Because when a company pursues growth, they will need to recruit talents and professionals from every part of the world. And because of the technology, because of easier and cheaper transportation, it's very possible for everyone to join different companies in different parts of the world. So the world nowadays is not round anymore, it's flat. Then second, in nowadays business world, diversity is common. Diversity means variety, means differences. Organizations need to understand how to effectively serve and retain a customer base that is now significantly more diverse. It means that in nowadays, in the workplace, and in the future business. Not only our colleagues, our co-workers, they can be foreigners or people from different parts of the world. Also, every company and every enterprise need to explore bigger markets. So your customers and your clients may not be just Chinese people. They need they can be people for any part of the world again. So the diversity is common. It's common to see your customers, maybe they are Vietnamese, Japanese, Korea, Europeans, Americans. Diversity is common. So um, we have to think about when you work, when you sell your product service, how can you face and go along with your customers from different parts of the world or different culture? Okay. So if we want to survive in the future business, what kind of abilities, what kind of things that organizations and individuals need to know? The first of all is emotional intelligence and cultural intelligence. Okay. Emotional intelligence, basically, um, it refers to people's ability to get along with our own fellows. When you work with people uh, from the same country, you know, you can remain calm and you are able to solve questions. So everyone, employees or managers and competence in emotional intelligence can increase productivity and also improve interpersonal relationships in the workplace. Okay. And then ICC, our intercultural um, communication competence, is also very important. Our recall is in cultural intelligence. 
when you work with people from different cultures, then your emotional intelligence will not be enough. We will need more. We will need a cultural intelligence. We need to know how to get along with people from different cultures. Okay. And then the next ability is managing cultural difference. So management practices in every company will need to encourage innovation and a learning culture and a competency in working across cultural differences. So all these abilities will become uh, essential because remember our co-workers, our customers, they may come from different parts of the world and they may come from different cultures. Okay, then awareness and skills for managing diversity. So in the company, in an enterprise, our leaders, managers, and employees, they will need to learn how to develop the awareness and the skills to most effectively survive in a diverse environment. So this will make our company much more competitive and also make individuals competitive and successful in the business world. Now, let's look at this, um, the need of intercultural communication competence. So um, let's summarize what we need for the future business. Then we will know that everyone's intercultural communication competence will become a critical requirement um, for everyone who would like to work in the future. And for organization, organizations also, they need to um, develop talent and also uh, to come up with the strategies that can help them, organization themselves, to compete in the global market. And then for individuals, individuals, you and your friends and everyone else, you know, we are all individuals, then we will need to develop the skills that prepare you to interact with and work alone with other individuals from other different cultural backgrounds and from different countries. Okay, so intercultural communication competence is very important for the modern business world and also future business world. Now, the next let's look at, all right, so intercultural communication competence is very important. So what is it? What is it? Now, let's look at the definition um, of ICC. We call it an ICC. It's an easier way to call intercultural communication competence. Okay, so here there are four components, four major components. The first one is intercultural attitude, intercultural knowledge, and this is the second one. And then we have intercultural communication skills and critical cultural awareness. And later I will talk about each component one by one. Every component of this competence is very important. So now let's look at the next slide. This slide shows you the goals of intercultural communication competence. The first goal, an intercultural professional has an ability to interact with others, to accept other perspectives and perceptions for the world. Okay, so here we have we ourselves, right? But in contrast to we ourselves, then they are others. So the first goal of developing intercultural communication competence is to, to learn about other people, to respect other people. Okay, uh, next one. Intercultural communication competence is necessary no matter a different language is present or not. This is also a very important concept. When we talk about um, people from different cultures, Sometimes those different cultures uh, does not really mean different countries or different nations. Even within the same country or even when people speak the same language, still we are influenced by our cultural backgrounds. So for example, you speak Chinese and your friends also speak in Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, but can you understand each other? Can you understand each other all the time? Maybe not. Why? Because we all come from different family um, culture. We come from probably different kind of um, 
education background. And so education, family, religion, they can influence our values and the behaviors. And for this part, we were talking more about it later on. But here, I need you to keep this in mind. So no matter there is a different language or a foreign language present or not, intercultural communication competence is still necessary uh, even for people in the same country. Okay, another um, goal of ICC is the good business and professional is also able to mediate between different perspectives to be conscious of their evaluation of um, difference. So it means that every one of us, we have a different point of view and we have a different values, but um, we need to be conscious. So we need to be aware of our own values and keep thinking that if our values influence us to judge other people fairly or unfairly. Okay, so these are the goals of intercultural communication competence. Now, here, so this is a very quick summary of the components of the ICC. Now let's look at this again. We will see this um, figure uh, again and again. So I hope this can help you to remember what it is and to learn about it and make it a part of um, your learning and personality. So what is intercultural communication competence? Competence means ability. Your ability to communicate cross-culturally. And how can you do that? And how can you come up with that ability? Now you need to have four things. The first one is an attitude, correct intercultural attitude. And we will talk about what are correct intercultural attitude and intercultural knowledge, and intercultural communication skills, and critical cultural awareness. Again, we will talk about each component later. Now, First of all, now let's look at intercultural attitude. So what does it mean? It means an understanding of your own culture as well as have curiosity and openness to other cultures. So when we talk about intercultural, intercultural means um, getting from one culture to another. So you start with your own culture. If you are Taiwanese, okay, you start with Taiwanese culture. You understand Taiwanese culture, you probably like it, and you have good knowledge and good understanding of Taiwanese culture. But at the same time, you feel curious, you're interested, and you're open-minded to other cultures. Okay, so what are the other cultures? I don't know, maybe European culture, maybe American culture, Japanese culture, so you are open-minded, you're interested in, in all the cultures, but at the same time, you have a very good understanding of a Taiwanese culture as a Taiwanese. Okay, second, the correct and the good intercultural attitude include understanding the benefits associated with the cultural diversity. So cultural diversity means variety of culture. In this world, there are many, many different cultures. There are more than 150 countries in the world. And within every country, there are many different tribal cultures or subcultures. Okay, so um, we need to know, we need you to know that it's good to see differences. Because of the differences, this world is so interesting, right? If everybody is the same, every nation is the same, it will be boring. Okay, the third important attitude is do not impose one's own cultural values on others. Impose means force. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that um, when you think something is right, don't force other people to think like you do because everybody has different values and every one of us can have our own beliefs. So don't force other people to accept or to take your values as a standard one. No, there is no universal value. In your culture, your belief is something is good, but in another culture, they probably will think something, um, uh, the same thing is bad. So it's really hard to say. So don't impose your own cultural values on others. And the final one is understanding the importance of um, building um, effective intercultural skills. 
Okay, so later we'll talk more about you know, what are the effective intercultural skills. But here, the attitude is that you know, we need to know its importance. Uh, it's important to build effective you know, intercultural skills. All these intercultural skills can help you to communicate with people from different cultures. Uh, okay, so next here I prepare a Chinese um, definition for you because this is a very important concept. And can you just read through the uh, Chinese definition here? Um, here, all these definitions they refer to correct intercultural attitude. Okay, so are you ready? Can we move on to next slide? Mm -hmm.